As part of the Apollo 11 mission, it has been 50 years since people set foot on the moon for the first time on July 20th, 1969. After that, there were six more trips to the moon, and five of them were successful. Future Apollo expeditions, however, were canceled in 1970, and the Apollo 17 mission in 1972 became the last manned journey to the moon. The 12-day mission, which took place from December 7 and 19, set records for the longest spacewalk, the longest lunar landing, and the biggest lunar samples returned to Earth. It has been 50 years since the last man departed the moon, and then we stopped. It will soon be five decades since a human being has walked on the moon's surface. Contrary to countless science fiction stories, we don't have a moon base. Contrary to a lot of optimistic opinions, we're not even very close to ever going back. Normally, the hardest part about getting from one place to another is the first time. After that, the logistical problems have been solved and the trip becomes easier and easier. So how come that hasn't happened with the moon? Although your first guesses are probably part of the explanation, there isn't just one real reason we haven't been back to the moon. There's a whole matrix of reasons keeping us sadly earthbound. One, it's too politically risky. It took more than a decade to get us to the moon the first time. It also took an incredible amount of money and effort, both mental and physical. And it could have gone wrong at any time technology could have failed, astronauts could have died, or a new president could have simply canceled the project. The political risks were so high it's actually miraculous the project succeeded. That's the other problem. The benefits of going back to the moon are largely theoretical. Scientific research is a key reason to go back, but there's no clear profit margin. A moon base could be used as a refueling depot, but until there's a more practical reason to go to and from the moon or to use the moon as a layover on our way somewhere else, the risks associated with such a project are frightening. Put simply, no politician wants to have their name associated with an expensive boondoggle or a tragic disaster. Two, the moon landing wasn't designed for repetition. Landing on and strutting around the moon in 1969 was an incredible feat. Sure, it cost a tremendous amount of money and effort, but you'd be forgiven for assuming that once we've achieved a goal like this, it must get easier to do. Unfortunately, you're wrong, and that's one big reason we haven't been back since the end of the original Apollo program in 1972. Because the original moon landing project was posituned as a race against the Soviets, the project wasn't designed for efficiency. Shortcuts were used wherever possible, and no one thought to build sustainable supply chains. The end result is a system where the equivalent of two or three jumbo jets worth of technology and engineering is just burned up or thrown away, never to be used again. In other words, the whole system of getting people to the moon was never designed for repetition. 3. Making the moon Pay is difficult. Like it or not, we're a capitalist society. Projects are pitched with a return on investment and putting people on the moon just doesn't offer any kind of profit. In fact, when you consider how much incredibly expensive technology winds up burning up and crashing into the ocean, never to be used again, it runs into negative numbers by a wide margin. The moon is a rich source of helium-3, a rare and finite element that could one day be a tremendous source of power and the moon could also be set up as a stopover point for longer trips. But for either of those scenarios to make sense, we'd need a permanent moon base of some sort. They estimate on the cost to establish a basic sort of base run to the $100 billion range, and maintaining just four astronauts in such a base would cost $36 billion a year. And that's before setting up the equipment and infrastructure for mining or refueling operations. That means making any sort of profit is nearly impossible. And so enthusiasm for a return remains low. Four, we need better technology. Technology is always advancing, right? We managed to put together spacecraft that carried astronauts to the moon and then got them home safe and sound in 1969. 
Surely the last five decades have seen some incredible advances in the technology needed for such a mission. The computers on the Apollo lunar modules were incredibly basic compared to today's hardware. In fact, the smartphone in your pocket is probably 100,000 times more powerful than the computer in the Apollo spacecraft. But computers are just part of the technology required to get people to and from the moon and their limited capabilities were by design, as they needed to be extremely efficient in order to use very little electricity. Much of the hardware used in the Apollo missions remains state-of-the-art, and this technology was barely good enough to get us there and keep everyone alive back then. The lack of serious advances can be seen in how similar today's SpaceX launches are to the launches in the 1960s. Not much has changed and that's one huge barrier to going back to the moon. 5. The focus is on Mars. Been there, done that, doesn't seem like it would be a viable political or scientific attitude, but it sums up the basic attitude of many when it comes to the moon. In fact, many people in the government and in space-related agencies think we should be focusing on Mars as a priority. The House of Representatives Committee on Science, Space and Technology introduced a bill this year to make exploration of the Red Planet NASA's official stretch goal. Not only is Mars a much more valuable destination in terms of scientific research and expanding our understanding of the universe, it's also a goal that has captured the public's imagination. That doesn't mean going back to the moon is completely off the table. However, most experts agree that the only way we're going to get human beings to Mars reasonably safely is if we build a relay station of sorts on the moon. Astronauts would travel from the Earth to the moon, refuel and make other preparations, then launch from the moon to Mars, simplifying the logistics of the trip. But that means that we're still not going back to the moon until someone puts some serious money, talent, and other resources behind a trip to Mars. And that's it. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, stay curious.